Okay, how much can a cow eat? This is a piece that uh, we got into some big trouble with from uh, grain. I'm walking away from it. You can see the volume go down when you're walking. Okay, I'll stay here. <laughs> They're going to keep me on a short leash here. He's going to keep yanking me back. Sorry. I got to bounce around. Um, one of the things we found in the early 90s is I used to think that cows had to have 50% forage, 50% concentrate. Turns out that was dead wrong. If you look at page 125 for the dairy reference manual, there's a nice little formula in there that says something otherwise. So we started moving to high forage diets back in the 60s. Uh, we almost got lynched by several grain companies, uh, but they couldn't refute what we were doing because it was on sound scientific basis that we could move the forage feeding level up. And this is the formula that you use, where you use the weight of the cow times the percent NDF of body weight divided by the weighted NDF of the forage. It tells you how much you can be feeding. We want equal or greater than 1% body weight of NDF in there. If you are grazing, you can kick butt with this formula because you can get up to 1.15, 1 1.2, 1.3. You have a far superior level of forage intake than we can do with uh, har uh, mechanically harvested forages. But when you're mechanically harvesting, we want to be greater than 60% forage in the diet. Uh, why did I choose 60%? Well, when I originally did this work, if I said anything more than that, they wouldn't believe me. Uh, they would just say, this is crazy. Well, they were saying it was crazy anyway. Um, it was a funny little side story on this. This was based on actual rations I was running. I was running rations. I'm an agronomist, and I was running rations. Well, the farmers weren't comfortable having an agronomist run rations. So what did they do? They wouldn't want me to do any of the rations. So the lady I worked with, Kathy Wixwat, phenomenal extension agent, she would go out, visit the farm. They would say, can you put a ration together? So she'd, put the, she'd say, sure. She'd get all the materials. She'd bring it back to the office. She'd come into my office. She'd hand it to me. I would put the whole ration together, hand it back to her, take it back out. And the farmer would say, great, this ration is working really well. Just don't let Tom anywhere near my ration. <laughs> we did that for years, and they didn't find out the truth until I retired. But because of that, I became a better agronomist. You need to know it all the way through as a system. And what we found is this is right out of that table. When you're at a very low minimum ration, you're not feeding an awful lot of forage. And you can go up. I only have it to 1.1% of body weight. The grazers can go even higher than that. But you can't get from one to the other overnight. You have to keep moving it up in little steps. And I can walk into a farm usually and tell the forage feeding level whether they have what I call A cows or O cows. A cows are these flat slab-sided things that are real skinny. They've been getting a lot of grain. They don't feel well. The O cows are these big, round, fat belly things that are stuffed full of forage. There's a big difference in the animal. But going one to the other, you need to uh, be able to uh, switch over time. Uh, if you look at here, we had a farm that was actually on a moderate uh, 0.90, moderately low forage feeding. He thought he was doing really good at that point. If the ration was balanced uh, for a 1,350 pound cow, I gave him the ultimate insult. I said, even the agronomist knows that's not right. And he got mad at me, so he went out and he weighed every one of his cows. It turns out his cows were 1,600 pounds. So instead of being at a high forage diet, he was at a very low forage diet because the ration was a balanced ration, but not for his cow. A lot of nutritionists don't put in the cows that you have. They put in a smaller cow to cover their butt, and it allows more grain to be sold. The independent nutritionists have really jumped on this and moved to the point where we can now do it uh, with the right size cows. You need to change that? Yeah, I was hoping they'd get you to um, use. Uh... Yeah.
Yes. The question is, is if we feed the dairy cow correctly, will she look more like a beef in terms of round shape? Absolutely right. They will. Uh, we started doing this. We have a small um, family-run grain company over near us, and they were competing with some big international companies and grain sales in the area, and they cut out a niche for themselves by going to high forage diet. They were the first ones to hit 80-80. 80-80 is 80% forage and over 80 pounds of milk. They have a couple of farms that are doing that. I met with uh, Larry Hawkins out in Wisconsin, and he has some farms that are 80-80. We've got a pile of them that are 70-70, 70% forage, 70 pounds of milk. Next one. Hey, yeah. Uh, your body weight body is in this case, we had a herd of 47 cows. They were all fed the same ratio, so we needed to find out what the average weight was. That's what the average weight was, rather than 1,300 cows. Now, if you can group your animals and you've got first calf heifers in there, yeah, they're a different size, and you've got to take their weight into account, and you've got to adjust for that. Uh, the real nice thing, uh, my brother has a dairy farm uh, just north of Ithaca. And he has robots and he has sales in there. Every power is very, very time. And he's been able to target the ratios now to the exact body weight of the cow, which is really efficient way of going. But you need to know what your cow's weigh to start with. And that's the point I was trying to make. Now, how much can a cow eat? Um, oh, okay. We got a little pencil on there. Thank you. Uh, how much can a cow eat? Well, it depends on uh, the forage feeding level. That red line is the minimum forage feeding level. The green line is where we want to see most herds. Most herds are down at the red line. If you look at the green line going straight up through at 40% of forage NDF, that's the NDF of the forage, you can see we can be anywhere between a 50% forage diet and a 75% forage diet, all depending on the quality of the forage. We can have the same quality of forage and then shifting the forage itself and also bump it up. So to put that in a simpler format, we're going to look at that in a minute. First of all, we want to maximize the nutrients from homegrown forages. We want to leave just enough room for concentrate to finish meeting the needs of the animal. So the first thing you go is with forage, not with concentrate. You make sure you are maximizing the feed you have. What they found out with these high forage diets, because Dr. Chase went and, uh, and interviewed a bunch of these farmers that are doing these 70 and 80% forage diets, they had increased butter, fat, and protein. They were getting more money for their milk. They had reduced cost of producing that milk. They improved herd health. The one that really takes it into shorts is the best. The vet's bills drop on all the farms because we had dairy farm business summaries being run on these farms. So we knew what was going on. But what Larry found was greater income over feed costs. More money stays in your pocket rather than goes to somebody else. But to do this, you need to balance the whole system out. There's forage produced by the rotation, the forage storage, and the forage fed. All those pieces have to match. Uh, I don't know how many farms I have dealt with where they increase their herd size by doing a quick calculation on the back of a breeding ticket and then add it onto the barn and put more cows out there. And then all of a sudden they're squeezed for feed. So they add a couple more acres on uh, or stretch their rotation and grow more corn, which ruins their yields also. And they're packing this into a storage that isn't designed for what they're putting it into. So now they have to feed all the garbage feed, the spoils and everything else just to have enough to keep the cows fed. It doesn't work that way. And you can't go to a high forage diet unless you have the feed quality and the feed supply first. Uh, this guy went to a high forage diet and then was shocked when before spring was uh, on the horizon, he was running out of feed. You have to have the feed first. Now, if you have high quality feed, you could go to a high forage diet with high milk production. It's not guaranteed. There's other steps in there. But if you have low quality feed, you can guarantee you're going to have low milk production. 
And that's from Dr. Grant at Minor Institute. I think he says it really succinctly. And that's the way you have to look at your farm. Now, when I was talking before about that other graph with the different forage feedings here, if you look at this one down here at the orange, as we improve forage quality, cows will eat more. It's not rocket science. We know that, have known that for a while. The better the feed quality, the more they're going to eat. Now, if we increase the forage feeding level at the same time, we're putting more forage into the cows. So if I took a moderately high forage feeding level, moderately high forage quality, and compared that to a moderately low forage feeding, moderately low forage quality, you're talking 45% difference in the amount of forage going into those cows. That is a huge shift both in profitability in mouth being fed to the cows. In some cases, we run into problems with the mixer wagon not being big enough to handle that amount of forage. Uh, you have to produce that forage off of your acreage, which means you have to look at your rotation, et cetera. But that is the kind of numbers that we're looking at. And for an organic farm, the more forage you can put in, the more money stays in your pocket. So you can see there's a lot on the table here. Now, when I talk forage quality, I don't measure it until a cow's ready to eat it. Because there's dozens and dozens of farms I have worked with who start out with a certain feed quality at time of harvest when they pull into the field. And between harvest losses, storage losses, feed out losses, what reaches the mouth of the cow is very different than what you pulled in and started cutting. And that's why a lot of the rotational grazing farms can do so well is because the cow is getting the feed quality. Mechanical harvested ones can do well if they recognize each of these lost steps and then address them on their farm. And that's what I'm going to move into now, is looking at the steps where there's a huge loss in forage quality. 